Okay team, things are going really well. I've been making smart people videos for a while and they look very respectable given my previous content. We don't care if you're a slut. We really don't. And these are all important topics, you know, the future, capitalism, media loss. But what we really need to talk about is this Soviet era scary witch movie, Hear Me Out. V is a 1967 horror movie from Russia. On the surface, it's the story of Kalma, a seminary student, and a pretty bad one at that, who falls into the clutches of a spooky witch and then bad things happen to him for 50 minutes. But wait, I have so much more to say. Kalma is a drunk. Well, I mean, he's Russian. So he and his drunk friends are traversing the countryside and ask an old lady if they can sleep in her barn. That night, the old woman tries to seduce Kalma and he refuses. But it turns out that she's a witch because all unfuckable women are evil, spoilers, and the evil witch ends up riding him around the countryside. Koma then beats the witch, and as she lays dying, she transforms into a beautiful woman. No, she was hot all along. No! So I guess she was actually beautiful, and she was trying to seduce him as an old woman. Ugh, Russia. <laughs> Koma flees like a coward, only to find out later that the witch was actually a local farm girl, who, by the way, died of her injuries after he savagely beat her, after she rode him like a horse, the ungrateful swine. Sorry. I'm sorry. Koma then must conduct her funeral rites and stand vigil over her body in the church for three nights, during which she justifiably terrorizes him like the satanic princess she is. There's a lot of symbolism and metaphor in this movie that's heavily informed by the politics of the time it was made. So, Soviet Russia. <laughs> The Soviet era of Russia lasted for 69 years, nice, before dissolving entirely on December 31st, 1991. This is a very dense subject that we can't possibly cover on a granular level in a video about a spooky witch movie. But broadly speaking, Soviet Russia had three distinct periods. The Lenin years, the Stalin years, and the Brezhnev years. The Lenin years. When Americans talk about Soviet Russia, we have a few go-to jokes, like the Russian reversal. In Soviet Russia, car drives you! And it's generally seen as a time of intense government overreach and authoritarian control. So it might surprise you to learn that Vladimir Lenin actually put in place some of the most progressive policies the country had ever seen. This was the only time in Russian history to this day that anti-homosexuality laws were repealed. He also repealed anti-abortion laws and made it easier for women to get divorced. He limited the workday to 40 hours a week and believed strongly in educating the working class, providing free public schools to the masses. This was also a really important time in Russian art and film, and Lenin really wanted to cultivate a strong identity of what the new Soviet era would look like, which is why so much of the propaganda from the time looks so similar. Everything needs to be on brand, utilize the color palette, push the merch, like, comment, and subscribe. The Lenin years weren't perfect. There was still a lot of government overreach, but then Lenin died and, I cannot stress this enough, everything went to shit. The Stalin years. Joseph Stalin was a huge dick. That's it, that's the end of the story. <laughs> when people think of the worst events of Soviet Russia, the bread lines, the executions, the gulags, most of it happened under Stalin. Lenin had been relatively lenient with artists and authors who were critical of the regime, but Stalin was complete trash and would arrest anyone who hurt his feelings. Government control hit an all-time high, and just like that, a people's revolution to free themselves from the reign and tyranny of a greedy monarch became shorthand for authoritarian control. Bummer. The Brezhnev years. Leonid Brezhnev was sort of this middle ground, like he wasn't nearly as progressive as Lenin, but he wasn't executing as many people as Stalin. 
centrist, am I right? Ugh. And like most centrists, he was very conservative. And this was the time period that V was made. V is one of the only horror movies made during the entire Soviet era, because all films were made by a single government-controlled company whose primary goal was to push pro-Soviet propaganda. Soviet films needed to inspire pride and exuberance in the Russian people, and horror isn't great for that? The only reason V squeaked by the censors is its connection to famed Russian author Nikolai Gogol. The original novella, The V, sometimes translated to The Spirit of Evil, follows generally the same plot, but the movie twists the story to promote Brezhnev's anti-promiscuity message. Man, the government putting propaganda in films, that's wild, can't even imagine that. What a weird, manipulative way to run a country. Anti-promiscuity, like, god, what a soggy bottom lame wad. Fuck you, Brezhnev, I'm glad you're dead. I'm sorry, I'm... I'm sorry, I... Koma's fatal mistake in the movie isn't that he murdered an innocent witchy babe. According to the morality of the movie, the fatal flaw was actually here. Слушай, бабуси, теперь пост. А я такой человек, что и за тысячу золотых не захочу оскоромиться. Шалишь, бабуси, устарела. Did you catch it? Шалишь, бабуси, устарела. Instead of rejecting the old woman on his purity alone, he rejects her simply because she's too old and not hot enough for him. And despite his initial disinterest, he does in fact, well, go for a ride, so your girl's a cougar, I guess. <laughs> the witch riding coma is a metaphor for intercourse, and when they land, she lays exhausted on the ground, chest heaving, the way one might right after sex. Everything after this moment is coma's punishment, Honestly, the movie doesn't even get spooky until like 37 minutes in, when Koma enters the church for his first night's vigil over the woman's body. These scenes are what make V iconic and so rewatchable. It swings hard into gothic romance imagery before taking a hard right straight into, oh my god. I love this movie so much. Like, it's just so weird. Essentially what's happening is the witch is rising from her coffin each night and trying to come after Koma. She can hear him but she can't see him. He draws a sacred circle around himself and prays as hard as he can until dawn when she's forced to return to her coffin. The use of religion is also politically relevant, as Soviet Russia was attempting to undermine the church and push national atheism. So showing a seminary student as a drunken fuckboy is not an accident. <laughs> On the final night, the shit really hits the fan, and this final scene is just... <laughs> Let me walk you through it. The witch rises from her coffin, and instead of going after Koma herself, she summons all manner of monsters to find him for her. But even with these demons literally coming out of the walls, the monsters can't see Koma. Finally, she summons V, who is decidedly more comical looking than the rest of the monsters, but we're going to overlook that, and he orders the others to lift his huge eyelids to search for Koma. He's spotted, and the horde descends on him. The rooster crows, everyone scatters, the witch transforms back into an old woman, and her coffin splits apart. Honestly, the best part of this entire scene is how the priests who find him react. <laughs> Ooh. Nope. <laughs> and that's the end. He dies from barn sex. I didn't say it was good, I said we were talking about it. So what have we learned today? Nothing, actually. I just wanted to talk about V. Propaganda's bad. Okay, okay, there's more to it than that. Movies are not just entertainment. It would be cool if they were, but they're not.
Even films that seem to have no political angle can still be influenced by the politics of the era they're made in. Even the act of not taking a political stance is a political stance. So the next time you're watching a movie, make sure to take some time to pull it apart piece by piece and agonizingly deconstruct all its moving parts until it no longer resembles the thing you were previously enjoying. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs>